So about a week ago, I got a comment from Diego and he said, how can I make a hologram or holographic material to use as a certification label? You know me, I took it on as a challenge. I played around for a bit the other day and this is where I landed. These are some of my renderings right out of Keyshot. And these are pretty cool materials. You have these kind of various layers and levels of depth to this material. And this is what we're gonna go through and learn how to do today. If you have been liking this series or if you find this video helpful, consider using one of my Amazon links down below. They will take you to amazon.com and whatever shopping you do on there, I will get a tiny little commission, does not cost you a thing, and that is a good way to help support this channel so I can continue to make videos for you guys week after week. And if you haven't done it already, now would be a good time to smash that like button. Without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. All right, so you guys know that I'm a big fan of reference photos. I hopped online, did my own Google research, and I found these reference photos for security sticker labels. And these are what we're gonna be using for our references uh, today. You'll see a lot of color and a lot of layering and this kind of metallic foil effect. So this is what we're gonna be using or I'm gonna use as reference. Now, if you wanna follow along with our tutorial today, head on over to willgibbons.com downloads and there you can get your project files. Okay, so once you've downloaded the project file, head on over to import and grab that step file and bring that on into Keyshot using our default import settings. Okay, so you'll notice a few items on screen. We're gonna be using these different models to run through the basics or the principles of how we're gonna make this material. And once we build that foundation, then we'll dive in and build the material. All right, chapter one is metallic paint. This is gonna be the backbone of this material. Let's go ahead and hold Alt and left click on the red bar, go ahead and hit Control G to add a ground plane so we don't have those weird shadows anymore. Then let's go to our environment and let's go to Studio, find three panel straight 4K, give that a double click. I want my window to be full screen, so I'll turn off lock aspect. All right, double click your red bar, change its material from diffuse to metallic paint. I'll hit C on the keyboard to go to a white background. Now let's change our base color to black and leave metal set to white. Let's take our metal coverage up to one and let's take our metal roughness down to zero. Let's also take our clear coat roughness down to zero as well. There we go. Now, the interesting thing is with our metal color, this is the color of the metal on the surface. But interestingly enough, we can actually see through this metal layer on top. So if I look at a glancing angle, it pretty much goes to this white color. But if I look directly at the surface, it reflects the metal color here. With our metal coverage, we can control kind of the opacity of that metal. Our metal roughness is going to give us the little sparkly effect. Now, interestingly enough, there's a clear coat on top of this material. So even if I make the metal very rough, we have a smooth, sharp, glossy reflection on the surface. That's thanks to this clear coat. So if the clear coat had roughness as well, well, then we have this kind of satin finish and it is still metallic. I just wanted to give you a basic rundown on the various sliders we're gonna be using on this material. The reason we're gonna use this material to create the holographic sticker is because of all the parameters we have here. And we're going to use layers of metallic paint as well as some images to stack up and create our holographic sticker. Chapter two, the color gradient. Now I'm going to go ahead and double click on this material and change it to diffuse. If we go to its textures and we right click on color, go down to textures and choose color gradient. And it's actually all black right now. If I say center on part, now we get this gray. And if I go ahead and scale this down, this gradient, we see that we're gonna fade from white to black. I can click on move texture to rotate this texture. If I hold shift, we'll snap. So now we're fading from black to white. And you can see the 15 millimeters here, that's the scale from the edge of the gradient to the other edge of the gradient, as we're seeing in right hand side here. We can also move these color dots closer together, but I find it's easier to leave them at either end and just use the scale option to adjust this into position. Now this seems pretty basic. We can add more colors if we want. The other really interesting thing about the color gradient is we can use a different mapping type to control how the colors cover this part. So if I go and set this to something like spherical, it's gonna look totally different where we fade from white in the center of the sphere out to black on the edges. If we go to diamond, it'll look different. What I'm interested here is in view direction. So when we go to view direction, you'll see from this angle, it's mostly yellow. If I look down here, we can see at this glancing angle, it's black. If we look straight onto the part, you'll notice we go to a white color as we see here. So basically what we're doing is saying white on the left is angle of incident zero. So that means we're looking directly at it. And all the way on the right, 
angle of incident would be 180 degrees, meaning we're looking at a glancing angle here at 180 degrees until we reach the same black value here. I'll right click and say show all parts. And I want to take this same material and paste it on the sphere over here. So if I hold shift and left click on the bar to copy, shift right click to paste linked, you'll see that on a sphere we fade from white in the center, angle of incident zero, to black on the edge, angle of incident 180. And doesn't matter as we move our camera, this is going to remain constant. So now that we understand how the color gradient works, we're going to move on to one last topic or concept called node-based mapping. Chapter three, node-based mapping. I'm going to go ahead again and hold alt and left click on this bar so we can talk about this. I'm gonna go and delete the color gradient, right click delete, and then double click on here to go back to its properties. Now I'm gonna set a label on this part. So we're gonna go to our textures and I'll find the key shot word mark and I'm going to drag it onto this part as a label. Let's go ahead and say center on part and fit to Y so it's really small. There we go, so we have one label on here. What if I wanted to tile this label all over this bar? I could say repeat horizontal and repeat vertical and that would work pretty well. Now let's scale it down under size and mapping. Let's turn off use DPI and I'll scale this guy down. We have a lot of distance between the top and bottom of this logo. What if we wanna move those closer together? Well, in this case, we can't actually do that. Or what if we wanna stagger these in like a brick pattern? We also cannot do that due to the limitations of how this label is set up. But there's a way we can do it using node-based mapping. I'm gonna close my library on that left and let's go ahead and open the material graph. Okay, now in the material graph, we've got our diffuse material, we have our plastic material that our label's made out of, and then we have our texture being tiled across our surface. Now we're gonna change this. We're gonna right click, go down to textures and grab a mesh procedural. Hit C to preview it. Let's scale it down. So scale down on the right. Every time we see a dot, we're gonna have an instance of our logo, but we want a more interesting pattern. So what if I go down and set it to hexagonal and I'm also gonna scale it up a little bit. So we've got this guy. Now, the other thing we need, if we right click down to utilities, is a mapping 2D node. So I'll double click the mapping 2D node and I'm gonna set it to planar. And my mesh, I'm gonna double click and set its mapping to planar as well. So if we preview the, the node, it should be the same. Now I'm gonna take the mapping 2D and plug it into mesh. I'm gonna go ahead and choose UV mapping. Now this doesn't mean we're using UVs on this piece of geometry. I did not prep this using any UVs. It's actually using the UVs of this procedural mesh texture. And then from there, we're gonna plug this into our texture map and it adopts the UV mapping. Now the last step in making this work is to double click our texture change its mapping type from planar to node. And now we should see our logos showing up every time we have a dot on this mesh pattern. Okay, so if we want to play with the spacing between these logos, make sure we double click our mesh because that's gonna control where those logos show up. Under shape and pattern, we're gonna go ahead and find our pattern spacing and change it from hexagonal to custom. The blue link, click it to unconstrain these distances and now we can play with the distance U and V. So as I'm dragging V down, you can see it's pushing those logos closer together so the vertical spacing isn't so wide. And then if I play with U, I could bring them closer together as well. And using this method, we can basically take any image-based texture and then tile it over a surface using Mapping 2D. So the next step is to put all of these concepts that I just talked to you together, and we're gonna build our final material, but now you're gonna know the methodology. Chapter four putting it all together. I'll close the material graph. I'm gonna right click and show all parts. Now to hide the parts we don't need, I'm going to use Control, Alt, and left click. Control, Alt, left click. All right, now to make this easier, we're gonna work on just one piece of geometry. So hold Alt and left click on one of those disks or the stickers, right click and say, set camera target. And now we can rotate around this more easily. I'm getting this weird pattern, you see, if I go ahead and turn that ground plane back on, we shouldn't get that weird artifact. Double click on this material. We're gonna change it down to a metallic paint and we're gonna set its base color to white, our metal color to pure white, our metal coverage to one, our metal roughness to zero, our clear coat roughness to zero, and clear coat thickness to zero. Now let's go into the material graph. We're going to need access to some of our textures. So we'll click in the real, real time view and hit M and then go to our textures. I'm gonna find the key shot icon, drag that guy in there. I'm going to grab the Keyshot word mark and drag that one in there as well. 
and that should be all we need. I'm now gonna close that panel out. Now, as I said before, we're going to use layering. Let's duplicate this metallic paint a couple times. So we're gonna have a few layers and we're going to connect this to the, the root node and add it as a label. And now we also need to get a couple of other notes. We're gonna grab a textures, color gradient. Oops, I lied. We're going to need one more item from our material library. Let's go to our materials and search for rainbow gradient. Drag this guy into our material graph. We're going to delete the diffuse material that it's built on. But if we double click it, you'll see we have a full rainbow gradient here. And this is what we're going to use to save us some time. Now let's start really simple and plug our color gradient into the metal color of our base material. Notice nothing happens because we have a metallic paint label on top. So I'll disconnect that temporarily. So now you can see our base layer, metallic paint, the direction will determine the color that you see. So as we rotate through, we're seeing our different colors of our rainbow gradient. Next, let's go ahead and take our metallic paint, add that as a label. So now we've placed this on top of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug my color gradient into this metal color as well. And we basically have the same thing, two layers of the same thing. But this is where we're going to go and change it. We're going to grab our Keyshot icon and plug this into the opacity of our metallic paint. And the reason you don't see the difference, once again, is because these two are the same color. So if I disconnect the color gradient, we'll see that we have our Keyshot icon and it's on top of our base layer. So double click our Keyshot icon node and we're going to say center on part. I'll set this to planar for now and we'll scale this guy down and I'll turn off repeat. So just to explain this concept a little better, when we plug our color gradient into the base color, we have two of the same colors and that's why we cannot see the logo anymore. But this is where it's gonna get cool. Let's go ahead and add a color adjust node to the right of our color gradient on our label. And when we double click color adjust, we'll just slide our hue value, which is going to change the color of that color gradient based on the direction. So let's go ahead and set this to 0.2. So now they have distinctly different colors and no matter the angle, we're gonna see different colors between those two layers. Now let's also worry about getting this thing mapped and repeated across our surface. Just like I explained before, we're gonna get a texture called a mesh and we're gonna get a utility called Mapping 2D. Take Mapping 2D to Planar, plug that into our mesh, set it to UV Mapping. Take our mesh, set this to Planar, preview that mesh with C. Let's go ahead and scale it down. I'm going to set this to hexagonal and I'm going to go ahead, get out of that preview, plug it into Keyshot Icon White, double click on Keyshot Icon White and set it to UV. Sorry, node. So now we have our Keyshot icon all over this thing. And if we want to play with the spacing, just go into our mesh and we can take the spacing and take that pattern spacing and decrease it to bring them closer together. And we can scale the whole thing up with this wheel. So that looks pretty good for now. We are now going to do this again with our word mark. So what we wanna do is take the mapping 2D and mesh, hold shift, left click, drag a box around these two, right click, duplicate, selection. So now we have two of the same thing. Go ahead and plug those right into our Keyshot word mark and then plug that into the opacity of our remaining metallic paint. Plug that metallic paint into our root node as another label and we see our logo shows up. So what we want to do at this point is take, take our logo, find the mapping type and set it to node. And now we see it basically adopting the same pattern that we had on the other version and we don't exactly want that so let's go ahead and play around with it we'll go ahead and hit c to preview and i'll go to my mesh and i'm going to set it to not be hexagonal and maybe staggered and then to bring these closer together and go into custom unconstrain them and start to play with the sliders to create a more dense pattern and if you're noticing that we're starting to clip or take away some of our logo that means that our spacing is actually too small for the size of our pattern. So all we need to do is we can constrain these now and now we can scale up our spacing and then I can increase the size of the entire thing if I want. And let's get out of preview. So once again, now we have our two different patterns. And the last step here is we want this second layer to have another color that shifts. So I'm gonna take my color gradient, plug this into metal color. We're gonna use another color adjust on that connection and then take our hue and set this to 0.5. So now it's got a totally different color. So now we have three different layers that all shift based on view direction, and it's pretty cool. You can also, if you don't like the super bright, vibrant colors here, you can take your color adjust 
and you can actually reduce the saturation or the brightness. You can play with all these sliders on every layer individually, which is really, really cool. So let's say that base layer has too much color. I can add my color adjust to the left of that top metallic paint node, go in here and I could take my saturation down to say 0.5 and now it's gonna be more of a subdued color. So maybe 0.8 is a little better and we can even take the value down so I could have a dark background that those show up on. So you can play pretty much forever with these values if you want. Now, one thing that my example had that I really wanted to show you that I think really makes this cool is having a roughness pattern on that base layer. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and click align nodes. Here's where we're at so far. I wanna work on this top layer though, right in here. So we're gonna go and grab another texture. We're gonna go to mesh and this time I'll double click it. Make sure sync is turned off and let's preview it with C. And this time I'm gonna go for a triangular pattern or maybe hexagon, hexagon would be cool. Hexagonal and then I'll scale this guy way down and I'll reduce the pattern spacing by a lot. So we'll have almost like a grid, really fine like a honeycomb shape. So these white areas are gonna add roughness whereas the black are not. So if we go ahead and get out of that preview and we plug this into our metallic paint node and I let go, we're going down to metal roughness. And now we see it's really, really strong. It's too much. So let's take our white value on our mesh down to something like 20%. There we go. And now it's starting to show from different angles that cool roughness. And if you want this to actually be on top of everything, you can go ahead and do that as well. Uh, we just be basically need to plug this into any other layer that we want to have it show up. So let's say I want it on top of the key shot icon, grab another connector out of that mesh and throw it onto metal roughness here. And now the hexagon pattern goes over the key shot logo, but it stays underneath the key shot word mark creating that extra layer of depth, which I think is super cool. Now we're not completely done yet, we're getting very close. What I wanna do here is add that extra rippled layer, almost like a sticker. So I'm gonna right click and go to textures and grab a noise texture. We'll preview this, scale it down really small to say one. And now I want to plug this into our base, into bump, and you see it gives us that cool foil effect. Let's make our bump height very small. So 0 0.01, and even that's a little much. I'll do 0 0.05, oops, 0 0.005. And from this, because this is plugged into the very root node, this is a cool little ninja trick. Double click on our root node here, go to our labels, not labels, textures, find our bump pattern and choose apply bump to labels. That means all these other labels adopt this same bump pattern. So this applies to the entire thing. And then last but not least, if you want on these materials, you can play with things like add clear coat thickness if you want. Uh, we could take this up to say three. We could do this on all of them. And that might give you a little bit more of this kind of hazy, reflective, washed out effect, which I think looks pretty good. And last but not least on that final layer of your clear coat roughness, go ahead and add a tiny bit of roughness, 0 0.01. And by playing with these roughness values on each layer, you can really dial in a very unique and custom looking foil effect. Uh, I don't wanna cover every possibility because it's truly endless. This is a super fun, easy thing to uh, customize and really make it your own. So let's go ahead and hit our align nodes to work area. This is what our final material looks like. Go ahead and save this. I'll close the material graph, right click, show all parts, hide these two guys. And now we're, we have all of our stickers. And the last thing we have is this sticker paper. So I'll search my material library for a hard, shiny white material and pl plug this right onto our paper here. So now our sticker paper has a white plastic on it. Let's check out our environments. So it's a little dark, we can maybe go 1.5, brighten this thing up a bit. All right, you guys, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned some new techniques. Also, if you like the video, make sure you hit that like button, smash away. If you want to support the channel, remember again, I got those Amazon links down below. Go ahead and use those before you do your shopping. I would super appreciate that. And last but not least, next week is a crazy week for me. So I don't know if I'm gonna get another video out. I'm gonna try my best, uh, but thanks for sticking with me, even if I don't. And until next video, guys, happy rendering.